Ange, happy Easter. Thank you, mate. Um, I'm Greek Orthodox. Mine's in about a month's time, but <laughs> appreciate it. How are we looking, uh, team news-wise, after the international break? Um, yeah, look, uh, first thing is, I guess, all the internationals got through unscathed. Um, most of them got some meaningful game time too, which is important. Uh, so they've all come back all good. And uh, in terms of their injuries, obviously Mickey was the one that missed the last game. He, he's trained, uh, he's trained the last couple of days and uh, available. International break, obviously, but there's been little bits of news. Obviously, a friendly arrangement of Newcastle in Melbourne a few days after the end of the season. With the Euros and the Copa America looming after that, can you understand there's been a bit of criticism over the friendly? Yeah, look, I mean, I guess with all these decisions, there's always going to be um, kind of conjecture and, and scrutiny around why they're made. But, you know, I think from our perspective, like, like any club, you kind of weigh up the benefits and the costs of doing something. And, um, you know, we... For one reason or another, we haven't had a lot of games this year and there's a unique opportunity for us to add a game at the end of the year. Um, I'm obviously part of that discussion and, and we are we're mindful of the players and and the schedule. Um, but like I said, when you, we weighed it all up, we thought it was still going to be really beneficial for us as a football club and uh, we've, gone that, we've gone that way. I know it was a disappointing night for Wales, but shots running on Sky Sports News the next day. Just Ben Davis in the middle of his Welsh teammates, really sort of five-minute, real passionate... Um, speech from him. Um, I've never seen that personally all the years I've been covering Tottenham. It's, were you kind of proud of him watching that? Yeah, look, absolutely. I mean, I love our players playing for their national teams and um, I know what it means to them and for them. Um, and, and look, Ben's an outstanding character. I mean, um, you know, you can, you can, I mean, I sense that straight away in terms of the way he carries himself, the way he thinks about the game, the way he thinks about his position in the game, um, you know, the influence he can have. And, um, you know, I think from my perspective, you know, the more of those kind of guys you can have in a dressing room, it, it helps you sort of make sure that the standards you want to create and the environment you, you want to create is is going to be the one where, where, where it can take us to another level. And Ben's certainly one of those. And, um, you yeah, know, he's been great for us every time we, he's played this year. Obviously, probably wanted to play a bit more, but um, at the same time, you know, it's a testament to his character that whenever he has played, he's been ready to play. And he trains the house down every day. And, um, yeah, disappointed for him, gutted for him. Yeah, you know, obviously him and, and, and Brennan being in the team. But, you know, especially for him, because you realise at some point in your career that, you know, these kind of tournaments uh, are eventually going to run out, the opportunity to qualify for them. So when when you don't, um, you know, it, 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 it can be obviously, um, you know, pretty disappointing. Finally, and most important from me, Richarlison this week speaking so openly. I, I remember speaking to you in September about it, but he's spoken this week. Really brave. A reminder, I suppose no one really knows what's going on. He, was, you know, he spoke openly about the post-World Cup and how much he struggled. Uh, it's not just Tottenham and Everton fans, but I think everyone, millions have watched it and, and, and think so highly of him. It, what, what have you spoken to him in your thoughts? And it's just a reminder, isn't it? It doesn't matter who you are, how much you earn. We, we just don't know what's going on behind yeah, closed doors. Do yeah, absolutely. I think I've said before, you know, they, you know, they strip it all back. They're all just human beings. And um, no, I haven't spoken to Richie, but, you know, I think, you know, Richie has really benefited from, you know, the support that does exist, uh, not just for him, but for, for others in the community. And I think, because he has benefited so directly, I think he's, you know, he's taken on the responsibility of you know, trying to share that around now. And, and it always makes more of an impact when it is somebody, you know, who's higher profile or, or in a position where we think, well, you know, they shouldn't really have any problems or, you know, we see it as a sign of weakness when they're looking for, for help and support. And, and it's a credit to him um, that, you know, he, he could have dealt with this privately, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but I think the public aspect of it, um, is a, is, a, is a brave decision for him, but more importantly, it's a great sort of, hopefully a conduit for others to, to reach out and, and seek help um, you know, when it's required. And as I said, the, there's always a balance to these things. And you know, whether that's Richie or anyone else is that you always understand that you know, for all of us, we've got challenges in our lives, we've all got problems and you know, that there's help you can get out there and, and it shouldn't be hopefully get to the point where it's so overwhelming that it, it takes over everything else you do and uh, you know, like I said credit to Richie he, he's, see, he's sought help he's got help uh, the right help and, and now he wants others to, to, to also benefit from it
Hi, and um, obviously you've got your, your full squad back together again now. Do you feel that the two-week break came at a good time off the back of the, the, the loss to Fulham? I mean, what have you seen from your players in training today? Perhaps was it a good time to reset the, the emotions after that loss? Um, uh, well, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, every international window is the same. You know, you kind of you play the game, the last game before it, and whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, you know that. You know, by the time they leave the dressing room, they're gone for for a good ten days. So, um, yeah, you know, we use that time best we can with the guys we've got back here, and then you kind of. Uh, I hope, like I said, they get through their international commitments unscathed. And once they get back, the key thing for us then is to, to make sure that then when they're back, they're back with us. Um, and, you know, part of that process is to review the, the last game, go through it, give them the feedback they need and then look ahead. And um, training was good today. Training was, I mean, it's the first day we've had everyone in today and uh, they look good, they look bright and uh, ready to go. What has been the feedback from yourself and, and the coaching staff to your players ahead of the game against Luton? Look, a tough game. Um, you know, uh, Luton have been ultra competitive all year. Um, you know, they've always, um, in every game, really made it hard for the opposition. I think Rob's done a, a brilliant job this year, um, you know, f considering all the, the challenges they've had and the challenges they currently got with injuries. Uh, like I said, every game I watch them, they're always competitive. They always make, make it difficult for the opposition and uh, <coughs> it'll be no different for us tomorrow and we've just got to be ready for it. Um, we're back at home. You know, obviously the last game was disappointing, but uh, we want to make sure that we, we get back to playing our football and uh, and be at our best because that's what's going to be needed. Just staying on Luton finally, I mean, obviously you beat them 1-0 back in October and Rob Edwards has said, has said that um, his team are going to go on the, on the all-out attack uh, tomorrow. So what can you take from that first game against Luton this season going into tomorrow's one? Look, it was a different game. Uh, you to definitely take away the competitiveness and how hard it is to play, you know, at that venue with with a crowd so close to the pitch. Um, we obviously had Eves uh, Basuma sent off, and you know it was a different kind of victory for us. Um, but you can see on that day that you know that they're an ultra competitive team, and you know you hear a lot of coaches say they'll they'll go out all out and attack. But you know, Rob backs up his words with actions. You know when I've seen them play, whether that's against you know City or, or Liverpool or or Arsenal or any of the top clubs, they've still gone out and, and, and been really aggressive. So they're going to be aggressive against us and we're going to be ready for it. And um, can I just very quickly check on Richardson. He didn't play any minutes for Brazil. Is mm. he OK fitness-wise? Yeah, he's OK. He's, he's had a bit of a knee, niggle that we've kind of been managing him and I think Brazil managed him. But he trained today and uh, he feels good, so he's available. Um, back on Ben Davies. Got his UA for a licence this week. Um, I mean... I think he wants to do his pro licence before he finishes playing as well. You've obviously someone that's given a lot of young coaches or opportunities. Um, just destroyed the chair there, mate. He's not getting my job, mate. He's got a, he's got a bit of a weight to go, Ben. Yeah, so. I mean, essentially, kind of, can you spot people like Ben quite early on when you know a player can be a manager going forward? Not really. It's, it's hard, but what you do need is, you know, especially... You know, I think I've said before that the the demands on coaching and being a manager are, are greater than they ha ever have been, and you've got to be really committed to it. And part of that process is obviously doing your badges, which are not, which is not easy. It requires a huge time commitment, a financial commitment, um, and that's kind of the first part of it. And then, you know, you, you're not necessarily going to start at the top. It would be great if we all did, but you know, you, you've got to put in some hard yards there and. Yeah. So for me, it, it, it's, it's one thing to sort of be you know, really passionate about it and, and sort of wanting to explore the possibility of it. But as I've said to many players, if you think it's an extension of your playing career, it's nothing like it. It's a totally different experience. But you know, like I said, part of that process is, is making sure you try and gain as much knowledge as you can along the way. And you know, Ben's already showing those qualities. You need to have a constant curiosity about, you know, getting better and, and trying to improve yourself and uh, you know he, he, it's a good place for him to start but I still think he's got you know a bit in his locker in terms of his playing and uh, you know I'll be making sure that that's still his main priority. Um, kind of similar-ish lines, uh, Dejan Kulusevski had to deliver a like, bit of an impromptu team talk to the Sweden squad and he's admitted that he kind of nicked bits of your team talk that you've given. Mm. Kind of, how does that make you feel? Does it kind of make you feel you've made an impact or...? It's okay if they win. I, I, I wouldn't be happy if he was uh, using my words and they didn't. Now look, at, look, you, you kind of, you hope, you, it's not always the case, but you hope when you talk people are listening. Um, and, 
you know, you hope that you can make an impact on them from a, not just a football perspective, from from a life perspective as well. And, and like I said, sometimes um, you know, sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes there's a probably a valid reason why they don't listen because I can talk some garbage myself. So, um, but if they can take away stuff that's positive, I think that's um, yeah, it's great for me. But uh, more importantly. You know, shows me that you know at least I'm getting their attention uh, most of the time. And uh, Christian Romero said this week that he would like to play at the Olympics if possible. Obviously, you have the Copa America as well. Is it? I know. Obviously, you like players to play for their country. Is there any concern that any lack of rest you might get this summer? Yeah. Look, with all those things, you know, I mean, the Olympics is a little bit of a, of a different issue <laughs> because you know clubs aren't obliged to, to to let players go for the olympics and you know from that perspective we have a little bit more of a say in it than than kind of other internationals and uh, and certainly from our behalf as a club we will always be looking at kind of making sure that there's there's a balance there and um yeah he hasn't he hasn't spoken to me about it no one's spoken to me about it but i guess uh my pretty strong advice would be that you know uh, with the copper america uh, at the same time um and you know, hopefully, have us having gearing up for a big season next year. I'd, I'd be suggesting rest is a better policy. Just very quickly, because I just remembered it. Rodrigo Bensonker said this week he's been playing with a broken toe for last month. Mm. Does it just kind of show what a warrior he is? Yeah, it's broken small toe. You know, it's, <laughs> he's got nine others. Um, you know, it's. Um, I, I don't think. You know, I, I think no one can question Rodrigo's uh, courage. With what he's had to deal with recently, it's one of those things. But you know, he, he didn't want to stop playing, and you know, medical advice was he could keep playing. So he's 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 still been training and playing. He hasn't missed he hasn't missed a session as far as I can see. And uh, yeah, I think I think he's better now anyway. So he's fine. Let's go finish with George, please. <clears throat> Hi, Ange. Um, I just wanted to um, go back to the Fulham game. When, when when you reflected on that, what did you sort of see? What were the things you saw that you didn't sort of like about that performance? Oh, there was there was a whole range of things. I think I said after the game, we just you know we didn't work as hard as we have been in other games. It was probably the first game this year where I haven't felt we were our competitive levels were where they should have been. And um, you know when they're not, you, you're gonna you're gonna pay a price. And and we did on the day. I thought Fulham were good. Um, yeah, you know, it's always it's a tough venue anyway. It, they're they're really good at home, and we just didn't. Um, reach certain levels, uh, both in the physical aspect of the game, which, like I said, we, we've been really consistent in that this year. Um, you know, whilst our, you know, our actual play and our performances have fluctuated a little bit, our competitive level has always been really good. I just don't, didn't think it was at the levels it needed to be. So, you know, we kind of addressed that with the guys. And, um, yeah, uh, like I said, um, we're going to have to get back up to where we have been for, for a tough game tomorrow. And I um, just wanted to talk about the Premier League fixture list. I mean, you've got 10 games left, seven weeks of the season. But two of those games, Chelsea away and Man City home, you actually don't know when they're going to be. How sort of unhelpful is that kind of uncertainty, which you wouldn't sort of normally associate with the so-called best league in the world? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, um, yeah, it, it, it's been, oh, look, I think I said before, I, it's been a real weird season from that point of view of just there hasn't been any real consistency or flow to our season. Some of it self-inflicted because obviously we didn't have, you know, long cup runs. We weren't in Europe um, but it just feels like we've always had some sort of disruptions, you know, weekends off or, you know, you know midweek games at unusual times, uncertainty. So it's just been that kind of season for us. We've just sort of got to get on with it at the end of the day. Like I said, we know we've got 10 games to go. We know when the last game is and we'll have to play the other ones in between and just be ready for them. OK, we'll end the broadcast section there. We'll move on to the environment for 10.30 then tonight. Um, <coughs> hi, Ange. Can I ask you about Kazuma? It felt like... For the previous red card, and maybe from the outside looking in, he hasn't been at the same level since. Is, is that kind of fair? Uh, I think, again, probably indicative of our season. He, he's kind of, you know, he's, he has been very good at times, but he hasn't really got a flow. He got, obviously got, he got suspended, and you know, he went away for the African nation. So it, it's very, very hard for any player to sort of maintain certain levels if you're not. You know, we've got some sort of consistency in, in game time and inconsistency in, in kind of flow. And, you know, I think 
I think he's been better the last few weeks. I think, you know, he, he kind of, like I said, because he was so disruptive in that middle of the year, like a lot of others, he just wasn't really getting up to the levels that he that he showed earlier in the year. But I think he's been better the last few games. And, um, yeah, the challenge for him is to, to kind of work his way through that. Um, you know, I still think he's been a really important player for us this year. And, uh, you know, when he, when he is sort of playing at the levels we know he can play, it, it makes us a much more difficult team to stop. So... Um, yeah, I guess that's his challenge. He was left out when Marley scored for these internationals. I mean, how is he? Is he frustrated at the football that he sees this game? Um, no, I, I, I don't sense that in him. I think, you know, I think he's like everyone else, like I said, like us as a club. You know, we, we kind of haven't really hit the heights on a consistent level we want to but, but that's okay that's that's where we're at and that's where he's at and that's where a lot of the, the group are at and the challenge is to fight through that and, and sort of make sure that you, you come out the other side being stronger and more consistent. Thanks. Tom? Uh, it was a challenging first game for the Rally Dragons against Fulham but he's the kind of person who's by all accounts a great trainer chomping the bit to get another chance obviously you mentioned Mickey is available I mean is that is that Oh, I hope so. I mean, that's why he's here. He didn't come to, to sort of play one game. But, um, you know, I don't think against Fulham, you know, he was any better or worse than anyone else. I think, like I said, I thought we were, we as a team, as a collective, were really, you know, nowhere near the competitive levels we wanted to be. And so it wasn't reflective of him. But, uh, you know, we, we signed Rody because we see, you know, player who can contribute in there and um, you know he's had to bite his time a little bit because obviously with Mickey and, and, and Romero you know they're, they're pretty strong partnership there he's had to wait for his chance but we knew his chance would come and, and, and he came you know whether it was at Villa the week before or, or full, at Fulham and um, he's ready he's available he, you know he played for Romania during the break and um, yeah we see him as part of our future. Like I said, I, with all these things, there's always, you know, there's always costs and benefits to it, and you, you try and weigh them all up. You know, my, you know, my involvement in that is more around the, the footballing aspect. You know, but you know, th this is a club decision we're making here that we take all these factors into account, and we've we, we kind of thought that, you know, with with our season being so disrupted, not a lot of games, this was a unique opportunity for us. Um, I wouldn't see it as something that, that would happen on a regular basis unless, as I said, you know, there was a, we felt the benefits would, would outweigh the costs. And um, on this occasion, when we balanced everything up, we thought it was a good opportunity for us to again take, take the club to the other side of the world and, and sort of, um, you know, help us uh, continue to grow the football club. And, um, you know, that's why the decision was made. Look, I, I, look, I'm really reluctant to talk about details about that stuff. I, I think it's better Richie tells his story. I just don't think it adds any sort of, it would be unfair of me to, to kind of add to that narrative because I, co I could reveal or say something that, you know, he doesn't want. You know, I think the story is always better told by the person who's involved. And, and you know, from my perspective, as I've always said, I, I kind of... What I try and do with all the players is provide an environment where, you know, they feel comfortable and safe enough to seek any help they do need. Now, you know, whether it's Richie or other players who have seeked or needed help this year, what we've tried to do in my role in that is to try and steer them towards that and, and you know, also, you know, as I think I've said in the past, to, to hopefully give them some perspective around, you know, that... The, you know, whatever the issue may be, it doesn't have to be overwhelming in that it, it, it sort of takes over your whole life. And, uh, 
you know, f from a football perspective anyway, if we just narrow it to that, my kind of main bits of advice to him was more around get your body right because I knew he was struggling with his body at the time as well. So, you know, when you've got things and they become overwhelming, just chip away one at a time and, and it'll help you rather than try and tackle it all at once. So just a different way of asking the question is, because it was so striking, and I, mean, I haven't seen players look like that before, you know, you deal with players, you know, you've had players across your whole career, mm. you have private players come mm. in, but did it have an effect on the club at all? Sort of, yeah, you know, it's, so, it's so sort of revelatory that player can feel that way. Yeah. <coughs> No, but, and I'll tell you why, because it's not that uncommon. And no, it's not. Well, not in my experience. I've always had, because like I keep saying, they're human beings, but for the most part, we, it's dealt behind closed doors. And it's why it's always probably really difficult for you guys to do your job, because you never have all the information, and you never will, because there's so much that goes on in football clubs, if you could just sort of expand that out to your life and just treat a football club like any other industry, you'll realise that in every other industry, you've got people who are struggling with things. Football's no different, but we kind of, you know, we, 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 we've got a pretty strong sort of curtain that we can put up and, and it kind of gets all hidden behind there. But um, I guess it's, it's striking because you know, people haven't come, or players, or whether that's managers, players, or people involved in football haven't come out publicly before. But I can assure you that um, no greater, but no lesser than any other part of society. That that there there are problems that these players and people involved in our industry deal with, and the amount of money you have in the bank balance or your fame doesn't shield you from that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, well, I mean, everyone who's fit. I mean, we literally we leave straight after the last game, so yeah, we'll be taking it over everyone who's fit. Would you understand if there's some nervousness and Gareth Southgate, for example? Well, you know, I'm sure Gareth will be a club coach one day, and he'll get a different perspective of it as he has been in the past. I don't think Gareth said anything that, or any other national team manager. I, I was a national team manager, and you know, I used to sweat over every weekend when the players were playing, whether that's a normal game, friendly game, whatever game it is. Um, and the flip side of that is that there's quite a few club coaches who are on edge with national team duty this week. So it's a world we live in, mate. This is a new fixture that's been kind of inserted into the Yeah, yeah. A bit like new tournaments are always inserted into the fixture, isn't it? National team tournaments. So whether you're a club coach or national team coach, these are this is the world we live in. There's got to be a balance. Like I said, we've, we've thought it through as a football club and um, look, it's fair to say that if we'd been in Europe and we'd had a really big season that we probably would have made a different decision, but we weighed everything up and we felt like um, there's a real benefit for us uh, to play this game. Can I just ask about something separate as well, like kind of physical conditioning of players and, and how that's kind of changed in the course of your career with the kind of different emphasis maybe is now than maybe what it was 10 years ago. Has that changed a lot? Yeah, look, um, oh, it has enormously. I mean, I, I think that the, the two sort of biggest areas that change when I think about sort of the, the 26, 27 years I've been managing are, are around, um, you know, the, the sports science and, and, and the technology available um, from an anal analytics perspective um, to sort of assist you in your role. Um, you know, again, not unusual as just the, like the sort of everything else in life technology has kind of taken over um, it's certainly infiltrated into football as well and uh, and the sports science area so the way you prepare players the kind of the tools we have now to measure you know how much they're working what you know at what levels they're working you know what kind of um, gives us great data to understand you know how they are as individual athletes all those kind of things it's changed enormously um, yeah you know, there's still some basic fundamentals there a lot of it comes around to how you your game model looks and what kind of football you want to play and um, you know I think most clubs now sort of tailor their training program around the kind of football they want to play on a weekend and um, so yes there's been you know I think it's probably still the areas of greatest 
growth you're going to get, or not growth, but sort of development in the game is 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 in in those spaces. In the game, for example, what, what, what's the balance between you relying on your your eye and your, and your intuition versus the numbers that you're using? Yeah, it's it's well, you know, I mean, it, it, it depends on your experience, but because I have been in a game, or, or you know, more often than not, my gut feeling and my eyes pretty accurate, but. If the data tells me something totally different, then I'll go with the data um, if it's the right data. But it's like everything in life. You get, you get information. I mean, I, my, I think I said before, my major function every day is to make decisions. I'll, I'll make good decisions if I've got good information. So I try and get the best information I can. And, and by that I mean, you know, good people around you, the best people around you, and, you know, they get access to, to the data and the, they feed it into me and then it's up to me to make the right decisions from there. But when I was a Celtic, mate, I was the link with, I mean, the Scottish press are, are beautiful, mate. They, <laughs> not that you guys are, uh, and, and not, not casting any shadows on them, but they could throw up some names, mate. But um, he's, been, he's been brilliant, mate. No, he's, he's had an unbelievable season. And it, it's, it's a credit to him because I think, you know, sometimes, particularly when players have sort of been at the highest level and he's still at a good age, you know, people can sort of write their demise pretty quickly and, and write them off, but... I think he's been outstanding this year. He's like really consistent. You can see the quality he has as a footballer, but he's also you know, taken on the, the task of being kind of the main catalyst for, for Luton. You know, he's the one in there who's got the experience, who's got the quality, and he hasn't shirked the battle. He's, he's been outstanding for them. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 look, I think, you know, I guess, you know, when when players do speak out uh, or, or kind of bring it into a public space, because that, to be fair, they're under no obligation to, because it is it, these are all private things that all of us, like I said, go through, and you know, I'm not sure how anyone else feels, but you know, if you are going through something really, you know. Difficult. You don't necessarily want everyone to know about it, you know, because you know sometimes you know that doesn't help you finding the solution to it. So you know, when 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 players in particular come out, I think it helps because uh, then other people kind of can see that you know there is a way back from that. You know, it doesn't have to be um, sort of like I said. I keep saying uh, overwhelming, where you think it 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 kind of. You know, stops you in, in in achieving what you want to achieve, and um, but you know, um, I'm sure you know, whether it's Ross or Richie, they'll be the first to admit. Yeah, you know, they've shared dressing rooms with other guys who've just been through just as difficult a time. We just don't know about it. Just slightly random one, Jared Gillett's the referee tomorrow. Hmm. Um, he became the Prem's first or the team's ref when he came over. There's been some calls in the past. You know, a bit like like clubs signed the best players. There's been some calls that the PGM also have made just signed the best referees from around the world. Do you, do you think that's some of that you'd like to see happen, you know, get the best referees from, from around the world? Um, oh, mate. Oh, yeah, that's a random one, mate. Um, <laughs> Yeah, not something I've given a lot of thought. Look, I mean, I think like any other profession, you want to get the best people. I, I don't think that, that the refereeing you know, profession is any different. Um, you know, obviously, you know, like any other kind of nation, you, you kind of want to try and sort of promote the people. Because, you know, again, when you decide that you want to become a referee, it's, it's a fairly hard road you're kind of embarking on, irrespective of where you do it. And... I reckon for any referee to reach this level, they've they've shown some um, intestinal fortitude to overcome things, and I think it's probably incumbent on all federations to say, well, you know, the people who've come through their own system should get the preference. But you know, particularly when you're talking about the Premier League, you know, you are you're trying to attract the best of everything. Then you know, 
I think trying to get the best referees, uh, I see some logic in that, but that's my best answer to a random <coughs> question, mate. Um, it, it's 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 hard to say because again, you know, I think I spoke at the time is that I think yeah, you know, part of the challenge is um, understanding that the problems we have are not that unique and that we can still perform provided, you know, like I said, you know, you get the right help and support. So but it doesn't guarantee anything, you know, because whether it's Richie or anyone else, I guarantee you there'll be another challenge along the way somewhere. Uh, hopefully what you learn is that, you know, with the right support, whether that's, you know, addressing it yourself as an individual or seeking help from somebody else, then yeah, there is a way forward, but there's no guarantees of anything, you know, whether that's, you know, for me, you want to guarantee a good performance, you know, train well, do all the right things on and off the field, prepare yourself well, and then you give yourself a chance to play good football. And is that interview and that issue something that you think you will sit down and speak to now? Do you think he's already speaking to the relevant people? There's not something yeah. that you should intrude on them? Yeah, I've never felt the reason to, because again, um, unless, the, obviously, if, 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 if and again, I, I, I'm really reluctant to talk about specifics, but if anyone came to me with, with any kind of issue, my first sort of inclination will be to, to try and help them. And, you know, whilst I'm wise beyond my years, I don't have a handle on everything in life. And I've got my own, you know, like all of us, I've got my own demons that I need to deal with at different times. And, you know, um, so I, I, I'm really reluctant to offer advice Unless I feel really comfortable, it's in a space where, you know, I've got some experience. Um, but most of my experience tells me to try and direct them to people who can really help that situation. Um, so, you know, um, whatever kind of advice I give, I, I try and do with some sort of balanced view on, on you know, what the person needs. Do you ever seek advice yourself? Yeah. <laughs> But see, there you go, you know, so I wouldn't speak about specifically about anyone else. What makes you think I'd speak about myself, you know? And, 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 you, and it's okay to ask that question. I'm, I'm certainly not saying you, you don't have a right, but I don't think in any other walk of life would we walk up to somebody we barely knew and ask them whether they've got any, you know, issues around those areas. And I think that's where we've always got to be respectful. I think it's different when, when a, someone like Richie comes out and then I think, okay, well, that's in the public forum and I think he's doing it for the right reasons, but it's why when I come in here sometimes and I get asked questions and I, you know, I, I, I don't give all the information, it's not because I'm trying to be tricky, it's because I think all of us in life, you know, have have a space that we want to keep private and, and I'm certainly always, you know, conscious of that, that I don't speak out of turn, particularly when I talk about individual players or individuals within the group. Okay, thank you.